Because it's streaming live on YouTube. I have that come up too. As we're streaming live. It says we're streaming live? Yes, it yeah. does. We're live. We're live. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good morning and welcome to the regular meeting of uh, council, which is Wednesday, February 1st, 2023 at 9 a.m. I want to say a special welcome to everyone that's on Zoom and on YouTube and to the members of council and staff that's in the chambers this morning. With that, I will call the meeting to order uh, at 9.15 a.m. I will ask Carla to do roll call. Uh, Mayor Lavalley here. Councillor Collins here. Councillor Florent here. Councillor Kuyak here. Councillor Pijon here. Councillor Rodnick here. Councillor Sidock here. Thank you. I uh, will do the land acknowledgement now. We acknowledge that we are gathered on the unceded traditional territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people, especially the Madawaskarini people of the Madawaska River. We further acknowledge that the Algonquin people have been stewards of this land since time immortal, and we strive to treat the land along with the flora and fauna it supports, the people, their customs and traditions with honor and respect. Today, this area is home to people of all walks of life, and we acknowledge the shared opportunities and responsibilities to live, work, and survive within this beautiful territory. She regrets all my relations. Um, there, we'll move to the um, the agenda. There is an amendment to the agenda, if I may. Um, under new business, uh, it says Castleham update. That's district social services uh, board uh, update that I will get, uh, give. So with that, um, I will uh, ask for an adoption of the agenda, and um, I will look for a mover and a seconder. I'll move it, but I want to point out that the Castle Home update is on the agenda already. There is no... There's, there's no Castle Home update. Okay. Okay. okay thanks. It should be DSAB. Yeah. I'll make that motion. It's been awesome. moved by Councillor Florent and seconded by I'll Councillor second. Kuya. Uh, Carla? Moved by Councillor Florent, seconded by Councillor Kuya, that Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adopts the agenda as circulated and amended for the regular Council meeting of February 1st, 2023. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's carried. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest for this meeting? I see none. Are there any petitions, delegations, or presentations? No. I see none. Uh, we'll move to the minutes of the previous meeting. Um, I'll look for a mover and a seconder uh, to adopt the minutes of the regular council meeting of January 11th. I can move, move by Councillor um, Sida. I'll second it. Seconded by Councillor Collins. Be moved and seconded. Uh, Carla? Moved by Councillor Sidock, seconded by Councillor Collins. That Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adopts the minutes of the regular Council meeting of January 11th, 2023, as circulated. Been moved, seconded. Any discussion? I see none. All in favor? Post it's carried. <clears throat> and we'll move on to committee staff and council reports. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna I'm going to ask um do we want to do committee first or can we do staff first? Any any everyone okay if I go to the staff reports first? Sure. Okay. Uh Brian. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, just several items to update you on uh, today. So if you remember back to the 6th of January, the Electrical Safety Authority uh, issued a hazardous investigation defect notice 
and provided the municipality with instructions for correcting some electrical defects here at the Madawaska yard. So Welk Electric was contacted to do the work. Uh, I can say that the uh, work has been uh, completed. The majority of repairs were done by Welk on the 19th. They returned to the patrol yard on January 24th, installed the transfer switch that was missing. Uh, so the work is completed as specified. So the fuel pumps are operational. Now the ESA inspector only shows up in our district two Fridays a month. So the uh, inspection will be on Friday, fe February 10th, uh, when the ESA inspector will uh, do his final electrical inspection. Uh, yesterday, I was uh, talking with Steve Clark at AV Locksmithing. He attended the patrol yard uh, looking at the new setup for new uh, locks to uh, to lock out the fuel pump. So he's trying to find locks that will work. And once they're provided, the works department and fire department will be provided with the appropriate keys to access the fuel. Uh, yesterday, we had a surprise two hour power outage here at the patrol yard. Uh, I called Hydro One, they responded very quickly. The Hydro was back on by quarter after two and the cause of the interruption, we don't know. Um, in terms of equipment, several things. All three tandem snow plows remain in service. Last week, truck seven went to Winslow Durolamy Motors and had the exhaust repaired, but all three large trucks are, are currently operating. Um, we've had more problems with our small plows recently. So unit 24, that's our three quarter ton Ford snow plow. It was out of service two days last week due to plow problems. So we've ended up basically replaying, uh, replacing the plow harness and one plow module. So it's been repaired and, and it's in service. The second plow we had trouble with was our newer Ford 550 uh, unit 34. Uh, it's experiencing engine troubles again. Staff took the truck to Hunter Ford on the 23rd for repairs to Madoc. Ford diagnosed the problem as a defective purge valve causing the engine to run lean on fuel. So the valve was replaced under warranty and then we returned the truck to Madawaska. So since it come back, it's continued to have the same persistent engine problem. So uh, it's back in Madoc. Uh, as of the 30th and currently it's out of service. I'm just waiting to hear back uh, what else they might've found that can be corrected in a timely manner. So for now, unit 34 is out of service. Uh, we did have a problem with the snowblower in Madawaska at the rink. It had a broken handle, which uh, we welded, which was a very cheap repair. So it was out of service for approximately one day. Uh, our loader, it uh, required a new windshield. It was severely pitted. Uh, operators were having trouble seeing out the window. So for safety reasons, the windshield was replaced and there was one small side glass that was broken. Uh, Eugene's auto glass uh, came to the garage yesterday. So the windows uh, are, are currently replaced. Uh, finally, the tandem tender for the new tandem snowplow uh, is released. It's on the Merck system and available on the municipal website. It closes on February 17th at 3.30. Uh, so far, no inquiries regarding the tender have been received by me as of this time. Uh, and finally, congratulations to Jacob Klentz, who is our summer student, uh, completing another semester's work under our student co-op program. I'll be meeting with Jake's co-op coordinator this afternoon to set up uh, the new semester. Uh, and Jake's been doing a great job for us. So congratulations to Jacob. Okay, anything else, Brian? That's it for now. Well, thank you so very, very much. I appreciate the report. I'll move it to look to council members to see if there's any questions on the road report. Any questions or comments? No, do I get Brian? Yes. Uh, Councillor Pujan speaking. Um, the three quarter ton, you said it needs a, uh, you're having plow issues with it. Is that operator error? Because you need a new harness, do you not? No, no, it's it's not the plow harness, it's the wiring harness. Whoa, okay. All it's right. elect it's electrical stuff. It's the, electrical. Okay. The western the western plows are famous for having uh connectors that uh, are intermittent and and uh I mean this is a really common problem with that breed of plow. So but what we're finding is the the delay in getting parts and the price of the parts is up. So 
I mean, what we used to get in immediately or in a day sometimes takes a week now. So every time we have a breakdown, it seems like it's it's harder to get the repairs done in a timely manner. I don't know. I guess that's just a result of COVID and well, the results thereafter. But no, it was the wiring harness and it's working fine now. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? No. What would you be doing in terms of roads from here on in? I, I, maybe I missed it, but are we, we're up and running with everything except the one? That's correct, yeah. So, I mean, we're we're operating with our, our three tandem units. Last week, we had the grader out at Hay Lake Corridor and through Mackenzie Lake with our ice blades on it. We were trying to smooth out the, the roads after that uh, freezing rain and ice pellet storm. So, uh, you know, that, that helps. Uh, I've got crews doing some snow removal in Whitney. Last weekend, we had to tow cars from the Whitney Fire Hall parking lot because the snowmobilers were parking there. So there was a bit of snow congestion at the Whitney carpool area. So the, the boys have been working yesterday and today uh, clearing that out. Uh, there was some snow removal at the Whitney Dam to do where we push snow down to the dam and the MNR can't access the dam. So we're removing that. And uh, so regular regular road operations continue. And when we have the opportunity, we're, we're into the snow removal efforts. Brian, I, was, Brian, I wasn't going to mention it until you brought up the grader, but the section of Major Lake Road in the village of Madawaska is rutted from the heavy truck traffic on it. So first mile day, if it's possible, the greater run out there would make a huge difference. Just on yeah. the portion in town. I don't expect you to go out to Macaulay Lake or anything. Actually, I had a conversation with the, one of the truckers the other day. Um, the grader's got the ice blades on it still. It's up in Whitney. And when we bring it back, we'll be running out Major Lake Road with the scarifiers to smooth that up. So it's in the works. We just haven't got the grader back here yet. That's right. Okay. Brian, can you update us on the the dumper tendon at Whitney, please? The situation there. Okay, so we 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 put out the uh, the job uh, report there for people to apply for the position. Um, the last three dump days, I've had the Madawaska rink attendant acting as the Whitney landfill attendant. And it seems to be going quite well. So that's on a trial basis. And, uh, and that seems to be working all right. Uh, he'll be at the dump then today uh, from one till four. So on a temporary basis, that's helped me out with staffing that the rink attendant has picked up the, the staff and he was willing to work the extra hours. So, so far that has worked well. Um, so that's the status for that position. I, I spoke to uh, the rink attendant, Madawaska rink attendant yesterday and the, and the Madawaska landfill attendant yesterday regarding several issues. And, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll just continue to monitor staff and, and we'll just have to discuss, I guess, finally, how we're going to proceed with the landfill attendant position. Uh, if we just uh, move the, the gentleman into it or, or how you want to proceed, we'll discuss. Brian, I know I talked to you briefly, but uh, I guess I, what's the procedure? What do we do when we're getting questions with respect to snow removal that in fact may not necessarily be us and maybe um, the highways? Uh, I mean, are we supposed to call um, up to the MTO there, not MTO now, but uh, to Marin Sidoff or whoever, or what or do you talk to them, or what's the procedure for that? The proper procedure. <clears throat> well, the provincial highways under the Ministry of Transportation are serviced by area maintenance contractors. So for our area, that's Fowlers. They work out of the Whitney Patrol. Uh, all those intersections off the highway are. The responsibility of the MTO and the area maintenance mm -hmm. contractor. So that's up to them to do the snow removal uh, when they meet their standards for doing that. So it, it's not my position to uh, 
you know, to order them to do that kind of work, that that's their responsibility. So you know, if you would contact Fowler and, and their supervisor, they could give you timelines on when that work would be completed. Uh, as I mentioned before, when they typically do snow removal at the highway bridges, they usually go around town and, and do all of, or down the highway mm -hmm. corridor completely and clean out all the, uh, the intersections. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, so, uh, I understand what you're saying. I, I just <clears throat> thought, what about hours that what we're responsible for? Are we doing snow removal for people that can't see properly, or are we just trying to maintain the roads the best we can? Well, typically when we do snow removal in Whitney, it's usually the section of First Avenue from the liquor store up to First Avenue, both sides, and then... Uh, and then we, of course, we do, we have some sidewalks that get congested. Sometimes we, we do snow removal there. So, I mean, it's just what we've always done. Uh, I, I mean, our problem with snow removal is one, time and resources, and two, where do we put all the snow? <laughs> I understand. But I, I also am um, uh, concerned that <clears throat> if you can't see coming out, um, then we have a bit of a safety hazard. Can you read, um, Mayor Lally, coming out of the Larry Lake Road, is that where you're referring? Because I noticed it's bad. Yeah. I might give, um, I'll give Mark a call later on today. Okay. 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 Well, thanks, Brian. I really appreciate you coming in and doing a report. You're welcome to stay or you're welcome to go back and look at your roads. It's up to you. <laughs> no, I have some other work to attend to, but thank you so much. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Okay, we'll move on to the fire report. Ian? Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, the report is brief because I hate to use the Q word, but January was very good to us. Um, mainly, the, everything that took place was regard to training by the look of my report here. So on the 10th of January was the Madawaska regular training night where we covered uh, auto extrication refresher training. Also on the 10th, um, SPI, a company came in and conducted fit testing. Fit testing is nothing to do with the physical ability of the firefighters. Um, I really don't want to go down that road um, <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, it's actually all to do with uh, the shape of their face and ensuring that they are still adequately able to fit the uh, SCBA face mask and get an, uh, a, a satisfactory, satisfactory seal on their face. Um, this we take we do every year. Uh, it's thrown up a couple of issues. One um, is that somebody uh, their shape of their face has now changed. So I've got to buy a new mask because we don't have a mask that fits them. Um, but uh, that's all in hand. Um, I believe I don't have the figures in front of me, but I believe from the two fire halls over two days of fit testing, um, we actually managed to get twenty people turn up and, uh, and actually take the fit testing. Um, uh, the Madawaska SCB at the breathing sets were also flow tested. It's a regulatory safety uh, test on the SCBA sets, and they were also serviced at the same time. On the 11th of January, Whitney went through its fit testing process. And at the same time, I was also able to issue a new recruit, uh, Mr. Paget, with his uh, personal protective equipment. On the 13th of January at the Whitney Hall, uh, I did the induction course for the new recruit, Firefighter Paget. And he's now all fully shaped up and ready to go and on the uh, call out list system. On the 17th of January was the Whitney training night, where again, you know, I usually piggyback both training nights. One does, the other one does. So it was the auto extrication refresher training. On the 24th of January, I completed a course online uh, known as the Essentials of Municipal Fire Protection, a decision maker's guide. Um, it was quite an informative course. It is, uh, I was able to download the course if council wanted to sit through it one time and actually listen to all the, the principles of decision making um, with regard to fire protection, to be honest, there isn't much in it for you. Um, you know, that's what you pay me for. Right. To advise you accordingly, I hope. Um, but if anybody did want to do the course, you know, I can make it available to them if they wish. On the 20th of January, we had one call in January. On the 20th of January, uh, Highway 60, Lake of Two Rivers, there was a serious motor vehicle collision uh, where auto extrication was required. Our dispatch service dispatched the Algonquin Highlands Fire Department in error. 
They conducted an internal investigation. Um, you see, when I wrote this report, I didn't have their report back. I now do. Um, is council happy with the verbal report from me as to what happened? Sure. Yeah. Okay. In essence, there were two failures in the system. Uh, the call taker, the, so the initial call came from Renfrew Ambulance Control, known as CAC. Um, and CAC gave the location as uh, South Algonquin, Nipissing District. They, the, our dispatch service has listened to the tape, so it's quite clear. The call from Renfrew, they say, South Algonquin, Nipissing District, which we all know is a correct address. Obviously, the dispatch call taker from uh, Northern 911 is not familiar with this area and said, well, which is it? Is it South Algonquin or is it Nipissing District? Because if it's South Algonquin, I've got to call out South Algonquin Fire Department. And if it's Nipissing District, I've got to call out Algonquin Highlands. And Renfrew went, well, I guess it's Nipissing District. Um, the, I'll come to the, the, the corrections in a minute. That was then passed through to the dispatcher who again, another, this is a separate person, um, they made an error because whenever it's shown on the call as there being a doubtful location, they're meant to scramble everybody. And they didn't, they just called Algonquin Highlands, um, which came out from Boxtown um, Lake. Um, so there was the, the failing in the system. When they've looked back through their systems, the reason part of this failed is that the call taker, when the call comes up and they type a location in, it immediately gives them instructions as to what to do. So the call taker, they knew it's occurring at kilometer 23. The call taker just wrongly assumed because it says there's mile markers in the park and they assumed that we would be running from east to west as opposed to the mile markers as we know in Algonquin Island, the Algonquin Park runs west to east. Um, so that also put the call firmly inside Algonquin Highlands um, area. Um, mm -hmm. there, was, there was confusion there about, about the actual location. I did a, a brief investigation myself, and to be honest, given exactly where the location occurred, given the location of the two fire halls, we're potentially talking about, from the hall, a difference in six minutes of runtime. How much? Six minutes. Six mm -hmm. minutes. Six minutes difference. Okay. From the staff leaving the hall. Obviously, we have a response time from the staff receiving the call to get to the hall to then dispatch and, and be on the road. But the journey time between the two halls, six minutes. Um, the call also, I mean, I gave it to you in abbreviated form, but it actually came, there were two professional firefighters on scene as it happened. And the call initially came in as one person VSA, vital signs absent. And as we know, it was a fatal accident. So I don't believe that this error um, caused any delay in the service that that person would have received. I don't think it would have changed the outcome at all had it been Whitney that was dispatched as opposed to Algonquin Highlands that was dispatched or Oxlade Lake Fire Hall. Um, what, the, what Northern uh, 911 our dispatch service has done now is they've actually changed all of the instructions that the dispatchers and call takers receive on their screen with clear directions that the mark kilometer mile markers, yeah, as a non connect well, I'm now a new Canadian person, I find that strange. They're kilometer markers, but you still call them mile markers. I checked that is the official terminology, but some things just hang over, I guess. <laughs> um, so they've changed it so that every time Algonquin Park comes up, it comes up stating that the mile marker system runs from the west to the east. And if we're attending from Whitney, we're counting down. If they're attending from the uh, west gate, then they're counting up on the markers. Is the cutoff still Cache Lake? It is. Yeah. Yes. Which is more, <laughs> it's not the middle of the park. <laughs> Where this, as I say, I mean, a six minute runtime, that, you know, Lake of Two Rivers, geographically is pretty much in the center, but Cash Lake, um, you know, is quite a quite a chunk more towards Oxton Lake, as you're aware. Oh, so, because um, they, that used to be the center. It's probably halfway between the two yeah. power halls. Yeah. It could be. Um, the interesting thing about your report is about uh, Algonquin Highlands is not in the district of Nipissing. No. Although they do cover yeah, an area in the district of Nipissing. Yeah, yeah, I think this is, Again, you know, partly where the, the confusion or the poor uh, subgroup 
is the dispatch service, you know, and the person who's yeah. sitting taking the call might be technically from British Columbia and, and you know, is now moved here and working there. But uh, well, I'm satisfied that the, the Northern 911 have done everything they can now. Oh, the call taker and the dispatcher have both received additional training as to what to do when these type of situations querying um, the locations arises again. So I'm satisfied that on this occasion, it, it shouldn't happen again. Um, we'll wait for the next anomaly to be thrown up. Well, it just goes to prove though that, you know, there's things can happen and that was a really unfortunate accident. It yes, was, yes, know, it was. It was yeah. very sad for the, the yeah, families. Yeah, very sad. Was Algonquin Highlands on scene before South Algonquin was dispatched? South Algonquin was never dispatched. Never dispatched. No. We were never dispatched? Was, no, no, no. That was partly the mistake. The okay. So we were never only dispatched. Sent South Algonqu uh, sorry, only sent Algonquin Highlands. That was one of their mistakes. They should have dispatched both services. That's what I said. If there's a, a query in the location, their standard procedure is to dispatch both fire halls. Yeah. And they, the dispatcher didn't do that. So the call takers received additional training and the dispatchers received additional training. So hopefully so we were that. never involved in any of it. Technically, no, um, it just <laughs> happens. One of our firefighters was sitting in his private car at the scene and, and got out and like, well, can I help? And there were two other professional firefighters there who were already dealing and like, we called it in and we, you know. So officially, no, we were never, ever involved. Right. Um, we probably wouldn't have known about it no. had it have not been for one, one of my staff being on the scene and phoning in again, have I missed a call? And I'm checking and I'm like, no, we've had no call. And then, um, and very briefly, then a few minutes later, I got a call from Renfrew from the catch service to say, we've had a call, we passed it through to your dispatch service, and they passed it off to someone else. Can I check that we've got the right locations? And, and Renfrew were right. Um, what Renfrew did wrong was actually picking on Nipissing District as opposed to South Algonquin. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they had the right, had it, have, had it been Renfrew dispatching us, then yes, it would have been right. They, they, would have just dispatched South Algonquin. Okay, well, thank you. Any further questions on that? Nope. So, uh, on the <laughs> yeah, complaints and concerns, Saturday, the 21st of January, our bylaw enforcement officer had to tow away three vehicles and snowmobile trailers that were blocking the fire access roads at the Whitney Fire Hall. Um, to the best of my knowledge, this is the first time it's occurred. Um, and, you know, we've suddenly had a massive dump of snow. The, I looked, this morning, not there aren't many snowmobile trails throughout Ontario that are currently being listed as open. Our area is being listed as open and caution of the, the green and yellow system, which of course has the effect of driving everybody up into this area, which makes all of our facilities like um, overused. Would that be a you know a way of expressing it? So where in the past we've had an adequately sized um, snowmobile pooling parking area. You know, at that weekend, it just got completely overloaded. Um, now, um, were they behind the fire hall? To the best of my knowledge, they well, were I actually part, different... they were down the side. They were blocking the route through for the firefighters who drive to the rear and park their private cars and come into the in hall. There. They were parked down the side, blocking all the access down the side. There's a nice big sign there saying fire access, please don't park and all that. You know. Yeah, I seen, I was driving by, the you know, no difficulty I found was um, I got some questions about this uh, and pros and cons one way or the other. But and I drove by there and I seen uh, our bylaw enforcement officer. However, I was not made apprised of what was going on there. So I had, you know, you had some people saying, "Oh well, welcome to Whitney." You know, we told you snowmobile in your vehicles. And then I had others saying, "Good, they were in the fire access route." and should not have been there so yes. there was i'm just telling you what came out in terms yes, yes. of local uh feedback to me uh, about that situation um but, you know i i don't want to know everything that's going on uh but that would have been nice to know what took place that would have helped me better maybe to answer some of the questions and concerns and i don't know how we set that up yeah um well, certainly, I was made aware of it for, by the bylaw enforcement officer. That this is what he'd have to do. Yeah. Um, if you wish, yes, as soon as I'm made aware of it, I can make you aware of it. That's... Well, it's just that, it, you know, it's tough to go down to the grocery store. It's tough to go to the post office.
tough to go to the restaurant for lunch some days, you know. Yep. Uh, and, and, you know, people are concerned. And, and on a whole, people were, were, were happy that that happened because it was a fire access yes. on a whole. I'm yes. just, you know. Um, the only thing I noticed, and maybe I'm wrong, but the uh, EMS vehicles, uh, the paramedics that were there, were almost blocked in. The conversation I had with um, the, the uh, with Mike um, at the time, he said he'd actually gone and spoke to the EMS staff uh, and asked them to stop giving permission for the people to park on the EMS side because it was then blocking them in. You know, so that infers that the EMS personnel were having people rap on the door and asking, "Oh, yeah, you can park here." And of course, once you've got one, you've got two, you've got ten, you've got. Um, I don't know if more signs would be appropriate. Um, so that's what I wondered, is there, is there enough signage there that people can read or to just, you know, for, that was kind of, in my opinion, the first really good time of snowmobiling. Yeah. First dump of snow, snowmobiles were all over the place. Yeah. And, you know, we encourage that kind of tourism. Um, so, um, I mean, I don't have the answer to it, but I just maybe better signage. I don't know. I was concerned for the EMS vehicles yes, when yes. I looked uh, in terms of where those trailers were. But, uh, that was just a personal vehicle, yeah. not, with, not. With regard to the signage, as I drove past this morning and I looked at the area, the snowbanks now are so large. The big sign that says this is the car park, you know, snowmobile park, is now pretty much obscured right. totally by the snow. And I think that was part of the problem. Yeah. Um, that when you had those towed was that there was so big uh, snow banks mm -hmm. and they were sort of encroaching on where oh, they the parking area. Yes. Yeah. So maybe now that if they were pushed back and I think you've been working over there right, or the roads have been over right. there, yeah. um, that uh, maybe there's more room for people. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. Well, it's, I, I guess this year it's, you know, with the, the weather constantly seems to be changing. Um, um, you know, perhaps it's just a situation we'll have to monitor and see if it happens. Was this just a one-off or is this going to be a regular occurrence? And if it is, then we're perhaps tech council will have to think about alternative solutions. You know, um, signs, I mean, Mike said to me at the time that he directed a couple of people to come down to the township office here yeah. and use the car parks here because on a Saturday, Sunday, not being used, yeah. you know? So possibly that's the solution, you know, a sign up saying overflow parking available mm. one kilometre down the road or something or, or something like that. Yeah. Well, it was a, it, it, it made for interesting talk in the town anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Used to be only a summer problem. It's kind of a good thing that it's a winter problem as well. Yes, yes. So with the summer, I mean, Yes, overflow parking is, is an ongoing problem. At least we don't have the snow in the way. You know, we've got the maximum area that we yeah. possibly can. Yeah. Or direct them down to Madawaska. The car park there wasn't full. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving on, so upcoming events on the 9th of February. I have a firefighter um, at Madawaska who's starting his instructor's course. He did, you'll remember from previous reports that uh, he did have an, uh, a course that, that was uh, a couple of months ago, but unfortunately due to medical issues, he was unable to complete that course. And so I've signed him up for a new course, um, go back over. They wouldn't let him finish the one he'd started because he'd missed chunks of it. But, uh, and then just for the note for the calendar, the 22nd and 23rd of April is the earliest date I can now get for the first aid CPR and AED course that I mentioned at the last meeting. Um, the instructor himself is incredibly busy and that's the, the earliest he can, he can do. Um, under the final item of correspondence, another on the 11th and 12th of January, the uh, breathing apparatus compressor at Whitney received its annual service. Uh, it turned out to be a very, very long and drawn out problem uh, process because uh, eventually they traced a fault to a safety mechanism on the door. If the cylinders go into the machine, the door has to be shut uh, as a security in case the cylinders explode, it's all contained within the machine. And uh, the door had a safety mechanism on it, but if the door wasn't shut properly, it wouldn't allow any air through. That was the problem. And it took the poor technician two days to trace that. It was allowing some air through, not all the air through. We could, we could charge our tanks to 3,300 PSI, not 4,400 PSI. Um, that, that was causing a problem. They eventually traced it to the door mechanism. And uh, in consultation with myself, it was decided to take that out of the system 
um, and have it repaired and then run with a system where there was no safety mechanism on it. I had a phone call yesterday from SPI to say that they've now spoken to the manufacturers of that uh, machine, that the, the fill system. Um, and uh, obviously we bought it used. Uh, the machine is now obsolete. The, it's not a problem with regard to the part because they said we've never fitted that part to our machines. It would appear to be somebody in the past as an aftermarket or an afterthought added this safety system into the system that wasn't technically required. So I, in consultation with SPI, I've said I'm happy for the, the switch to remain out of service. Um, and we came up with the, the alternative solution will be a great big banner across the front saying, you know, you must not use this machine without the door being fully closed. Um, I can't see, it, it's an incredibly heavy door. And when you close it, the big safety bar that comes down on it, you know, uh, I cannot see anybody for any reason wanting to try and use it with the door open. It, it restricts the space in the room and everything else. So um, I'm happy that uh, correctly labeled, you know, the machine will be safe and secure. It was never designed to have that safety switch put on it anyway. So okay. initially. Um, Yep, and the, they're coming back on the 15th of February. But because of the problems with the um, the actual fill system, they were not they were not able to do the uh, flow testing on the Whitney um, breathing sets. So they're coming back on the 15th of February to complete that service there, service and flow testing of the of the Whitney CBA CBA stuff. That concludes my report. If any councillors have any questions. I just wanted to go back to one item. It's on the 25th of February, you put Deputy, Deputy Chief John Stubbs retired. Oh, yes, sorry, yes. Um, I'm that's wondering, because I'm working from my draft. And that's, okay, that's okay, that's <laughs> okay. I'm wondering uh, if you could prepare a letter for my signature, and council signature, thanking him for his service. Exactly, uh, yes. John's been there quite a while, and yes. he's done a good good remarkable job I've I, been speaking to Carla about exactly that and also having a framed certificate of service wonderful. Um, for him okay um, thank you any questions or comments from councillors actually I have signed up to do that essentials of the municipal fire protection um, on the 7th okay yeah if you felt that it wasn't required, then I would say, great, I have a free day. <laughs> it, it basically just runs through um, levels of service, what councils can be looking at. It, it's mainly from my side of it. Um, it's, it's informative if you want to do it. It's, it's an online course. You just yes. sit there and, and the, the two people speak to you. It's a webinar type course. Yes. Um, there's you can do a question and answer session online. You you can pose your questions and they will cover them at the end and then they send an email later on a couple yeah. of days later saying you know these were the questions if anybody couldn't hear them and these are the answers and yada yada yada. yada. So it, it's about two hours of your time. Fair and enough. there's a break in the middle for a natural break. Okay, I'll see what happens. Anything else? Are you going to have a replacement in place by the twenty fifth for John Stubbs? Possibly, possibly. I have uh, approached uh, someone and they've said they are considering the, the other options um, and uh, they'll let me know. Uh, I will be chasing it. Now we're into the new month with regard to replacing. I certainly do want to have a replacement. You know, my idea of the structure of the fire department is there'll be a chief sitting at the top who does this and the reports and budgets and everything else. But the actual two fire halls run by deputy chiefs. Exactly what I do. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, it was suggested to me. That perhaps I wanted to slim it down a bit. Uh, no, that's not. That's not. I don't think an efficient way with the geographical locations and the two fire halls and everything else. I think a local person from the local team running the hall, you know, and knowing their staff and the calls and the geographic locations is the best way forward. Absolutely. Anyone else? Anyone I just else? mentioned one thing about your safety thing for filling the tanks. Yeah. It's a far cry from 30 years ago when I used to, we used to get them filled at Killaloo and uh, it sat on the bench with your hand usually on the tank as you're talking to the other guy that's filling it up. So <laughs> it's come a long ways. Yeah, yeah, it has. I mean, when I joined, um, we had a single cylinder inside a metal safety mm -hmm. shield, you know, now we can do three at once. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a magnificent piece of equipment, and um, it has life left in it. And 
Long may it continue. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I don't see any other questions. Thank you for a great report. You know, very informative, as always. Thank, Thank you. you, Ian. Uh, the next one that I have is the library report. My understanding, I got an email from Charlene. Unfortunately, she can't make it. So I guess I'll see um, if there's any questions or concerns or any. Lloyd, do you have anything you want to add here? Or? No. Um, I attended the meeting via Zoom because of the weather that day or that night. Um, just went over a few things. It's all in the report. I got back to them on the volunteer check, how that works for a 14-year-old, that policy. And um, yeah, then Charlene had to break shit a home emergency. So. Okay, thank you. Well, I just wanted to add that the the uh, uh, the presentation that that um, was done um, on the Algonquin history went was went very well. We had good comments, good feedback from it with Christine on the Kasavis McCray. And my understanding is that there's, there's the second kind of part of it, March 6th. So uh, um, got a good write up in the paper, which is always good for our township. So um, so thank you for that. And uh, yes, so with that, then if there aren't any, any questions on the library report from anyone? Let's see any, so I will move on to uh, what do I have now, Tracy? You next? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So my staff report is pretty self-explanatory. Um, council passed a resolution at the regular council meeting of July 6th to uh, authorize staff to proceed with the sale of a unopened shore road allowance. Um, so this bylaw is now in the package for other bylaw section and uh, to be passed today. Council. Wishes. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't pass, but um, if anybody has any, I know this is the first sale and show road allowance for this new council, so if anybody has any questions, we can answer them. Any questions for uh, on the um, action bylaw, the committee report by Tracy? Any questions or comments? Okay, we'll see any. We'll move Maybe I'll just make a comment sure. for the new councillors that aren't familiar with my action on <laughs> shoreline road allowance sales. <laughs> Not against any of them particularly, but I'm against the way, the method of compensation that the council township gets for shoreline road allowances. So traditionally I've voted against every one of them in because the last the 15 years, I've voted against them all. Uh, only on it's a more, more a matter of principle than anything else. If we changed the rate that we charge for shoreline road allowances, I'd probably change my vote. But until then, I won't put forth any motions for shoreline road allowances and I won't vote in favor of it. Thank you, Councillor Floyd. Um, so I have said, excuse me, Councillor okay. Dijon speaking. Councillor Pichel, go ahead. I see my, you. My, my question is directed to uh, Councillor Flart. Yep. What is the compensation? I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but it's not enough. It's, it's, a, it's an amount per foot. Yeah, it's amount um, do, dollar, dollar value per foot. per foot. How much is it, Tracy? $5 a foot. Or I was going to say it's cheap. So yeah. five dollars a foot. I have seen you're looking at um, the cost of this doesn't count the application fee or which is five hundred dollars. Um, um, it would be about I would say two grand at the most. We get it would be what we would sell. We get two thousand dollars. Yeah, it's not, not not counting the other fees on top. Well, I agree with Councillor Thorne, and it is. <laughs> <laughs> we should look at it. So apparently, it's pretty cheap. Well, Take and they have to do a survey. Right. They have transfer fees through the lawyer, which we don't see any of that. But coming to the township is the application fee, and then it would be the. Is like, that a going rate? Like, do other municipalities have that same rate? It varies, but it, it, it varies among municipalities. Yeah. Yeah, but we may be able to find what other municipalities charge. 
I know. Oh yeah, for sure. The schedule fees bylaw needs to be updated. So at that time, then staff would do a review over the ways that was that. In in fairness, I'll give the other side of <laughs> of the discussion is the township does gain eventually because the property has now added 66 feet plus the width of their property so to their taxes. property. So their assessment will eventually go up. Yes. Yeah. So the township yeah. will receive more tax dollars, but that's, that's way down the road. Yeah. But also I think we should take I'm sorry, go ahead, Councillor. Who says Councillor Rodney? Yeah, but then again, the, the, and uh, yeah, I mean, I get what Joe's saying, and I don't disagree that we're giving it away too cheap, but we got to do also remember there is only one buyer for this little chunk of land. You only have one customer. You only sell to the adjoining property owner. Right. So it's a limited market. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Councillor Fusion speaking. Um, the thing is, is that we have to cover our costs as well, too, yep. right? So if the township is only getting X number of dollars per sale of uh, the waterfront and we're not covering our expenses, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Well, I think we are covering our expenses, Sean, but... Uh, Early. <laughs> Early, yes. Yeah. The, the uh, homeowner has to provide the survey and they incur lawyer costs, too. Mm. But... Okay. I, I, I know it. My vote won't turn any down. If it came to a point where it turned it down, I may waver a bit because I don't think we should not sell the road allowances, uh, or the shoreline road allowances. But I still, I just think we should be getting more. Well, I agree with you. So I think it's something that we should look at, and so you know, I'll make a note of that and. Absolutely, yeah. adjoining adjoining townships. I agree. Like I said, I know um, it's in our schedule fees bylaw, and I know that was on Brian's priorities to have a look at that again and do a whole. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thanks for bringing that up, Council mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Um, this report. If not, uh, we'll move to Jennifer, who's been sitting there very patient. <laughs> And so we have the staff report in for the 2022 year end reserve transfers. Um, so this is a report that we um, do each and every year at this time. It's an annual process completed before the auditor comes in to close out our year end. Um, our auditor is scheduled for the week of February 27th. It'll have two to three days of in person, and the remainder of the week would be completed off site by the auditor. Um, they will at that point uh, detail the reserve and reserve fund balances during the presentation to council, which we are presuming will be in April. Um, I'm not sure if you've got any questions directly relating to any of the transfers. A lot of these transfers have been detailed in the 2022 budget and approved by council. Uh, these are the final numbers that are coming out after the spending has occurred. I'm not sure if anybody has any direct questions to anything specific in there. Any direct questions from members of council on this, on the reserves? Nope. Okay. Okay. Seeing none, go on. anything else, Jennifer? Yeah. So we have a budget meeting that will be postponed. So February 15th is a proposed budget presentation. We are postponing that till March 15th. Um, there will be no meeting on February 15th. Uh, no, no finance no. meeting. Yeah. No finance. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't think there was anything. Your committee of adjustment is. Oh, okay. Out. Sorry, I didn't realize. Um, so we postponed that. Uh, we're waiting on a couple of key um, amounts to come to us. Um, BSAB and Castle Home Levy amounts are two of the main ones. And we also are awaiting some of the quotes we have been requested um, prior to year end. So for some of the capital projects. So March 15th, we think we'll work out a little bit better. We'll be a little more prepared to come in for that. So what um, do we do with this? Do we have two meetings then? On the committee of adjustment? Just committee of adjustment. Okay, can we, and we can do the two? Pardon? No, we can do the two? On the March 15th. Oh, March yes. 15th, yes. yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So we yeah, put we'll March 15th in your calendars? No. Yeah, for the budget meeting, but the 
the Committee of Adjustment is February 15th. Yeah, we end up having another one in March. <clears throat> Okay, I thought we had two on March 15th. So right, thank you. Well, we may. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll find one. <laughs> yeah. Any um, questions for Jennifer's report? And maybe I'll just speak to the interim tax bylaw that we're we'll coming do. up. Um, I didn't do a report for that, but I'd like to give a couple comments. Um, Thanks. So this bylaw is completed annually at the time of the year. Council approval is required in order for us to proceed with the interim billing process in March. Um, mm -hmm. Municipal Act dictates that we are allowed to bill 50% of the previous year taxes. And because at this point we don't have the 2023 tax rate set, um, we use 2022 tax rates multiplied by the 2023 assessed values that come in through MPAC. Um, just a little more information about it. There'll be two installments to this for to the March billing. So March 31st and May 31st are their due dates. And um, just a kind of a heads up that we'll have the final um, billing bylaw come to council June or July so that we can proceed with the final taxation in um, the first week of August. So this March 15th meeting has no bearing on the interim tax goals that are going to go out. No, so that's we're, right. We're yeah. still moving and, ahead. And that's, that's going to happen. That's the current practice for municipalities with exception to the larger numbers. <laughs> I think we have a motion today for the interim, don't we? Yes, yes I didn't put in a staff report, so I just thought I'd speak a little yeah. bit to it before the bylaw came up. But um, I'm not sure if anybody had any questions about that or we can address them when we go get to the bylaw section. Any questions? Well, we're an easy group today. Yes. Okay, see we used to do the interim billing in two consecutive months, and probably six, seven years ago, we changed it to putting a, a month in between. There was numerous reasons that we did that. Mm -hmm. but it seems to work better. Yeah, because people that I've talked, some people said to me, well, we're <coughs> budgeting, getting ready for our tax bills that come in in marriage, so I like, okay. <laughs> like so. Are, you know, people really watch, eh? So yeah, yeah, they've gotten so the system here, and, and they, uh, whenever we make any change, it causes a lot of confusion and things. So I think we we we'll go ahead with the way we've done it. See if it works. Why should we try to fix it? I don't yeah, know. people have really become accustomed to those yeah. dates, and they are the same each and every year, so that makes it easy for everyone. Okay, well, I think that concludes the staff reports. Um, with that, then I'll move back to committee reports. <laughs> We have committee reports on here. Any committee reports in that? Um, no. There's this one from the chair of MNL Rec. It's an annual statement. Is that one okay, Joe? Yeah, yeah there's nothing. Okay. I just, uh, for recreation, there's no real report because of the timing of our last meeting, because the council meeting was postponed. <clears throat> I give the report from the last recreation meeting at the last council meeting. There hasn't been in one just <clears throat> uh, maybe mention that there was a great turnout for the bridge reopening in Madawaska that was kind of hosted by the recreation committee and as far as the budgeting uh, I think uh, my wife Sharon the secretary treasurer of that committee and uh, our janitor that's in charge there are meeting with a painter this morning yes to get a price on the painting for the budget Okay, well, thank you. Okay, and then if, if there aren't any more committee reports, I'll move on to council reports. Are there any reports from members of council that the council wants to know? <clears throat> any, any hands up there? I can't see. I need Looks better quiet. glasses, I guess. Did I hear someone? No? I guess I'll just say a few words about the uh, Whitney Rec committee they did meet um mid january we're due to meet again next week um it, it's up and running again which is nice to see um i'll have more information for you as we go forward um uh Lori and i are going to tag team again and uh have a meeting uh, the 16th of February in regards to uh, downtown or uh, Whitney uh, beautification. And uh, we've probably put posters out today. Yeah. If not today, tomorrow. Um, and we'll start working on a, a plan. Our 
main plan this year will be to get some flowers, uh, whether or not planters, baskets, et cetera, and maybe banners that could be used where the uh, the veteran banners were. Um, anyways, that's our, our hope. And hopefully we'll see a lot of people out and some good ideas. Great, thank you. Any questions, comments? Any other reports? Okay. Any business arising from the minutes? Okay. I think there was one. Go okay, um, well, ahead, Councillor. Yeah. It was in regards to uh, the works uh, supervisor position. Um, it, there had been no uh, time um, specified when we spoke about reviewing of that whole works department and um, the outcome. Not sure if that was just missed or if I missed it, <laughs> but we should probably have some type of a time commitment, right? We could wait another six months and still not have anything. Okay. Anyway, I speak to that because I probably spoke to me with that. Um, I believe what, when he returns, he's going to do a review and then he's going to address it once he gets back. Okay. That was my understanding, but I, which I see always off on his honeymoon, right. and we've made a conscious decision to try not to bother him. So uh, when, as soon as he returns, so Councillor um, Puyak, we will move on. We will be moving on that. Sort of alluded to that there would be a group to look at that, and again, I would assume that's human resources. So yeah, um, yeah. Sharon would be involved. Yes, Sharon, you will be. I'm sure. Sandra, I mean, Sandra, Sandra you'll be Sarah. part of that, eh? I always call you Sharon. Sharon. Councilor Collins, you'll be part of. I, I will, but uh, I, I need to make it aware that uh, I'm actually going away on vacation. So um, hopefully there is time when Mr. Martin gets back before I leave that we can actually get the guys together and uh, and hash out some uh, some information there for you. So when, I'm, you, I'm, when are you on vacation, Councilor? The 22nd of February. So uh, it's it's a bit Somebody tight. Somebody make a note of that so that when Brian returns, we can move on this issue. I think uh, the discussion was that it would be near the end of March when we get right down to the nitty gritty because Councillor mm -hmm. Pijo wanted to be part of that right. uh, as well as me. But I'm not going on holiday, so I'll be available whenever. Okay. I, I think um, looking... Brian Acne seems to have his handle on snow clearing and all the jobs um, that, that are running out of the workshop at the moment. He, he seems to have handled that absolutely impeccably. And, uh, and we have to take it, you know, he, he needs praise for that. Um, but I understand that we need to get something in place and, uh, and, and we need to see what we're going to do. Are we going to reorganize um, the works department, or are we just going to um, put an advert in for a total replacement on uh, on on the previous role? So um, I, I think there needs to be discussion, and then obviously middle of, middle of March onwards um, would still put somebody in place, hopefully for April and spring um, when we need someone there for maintenance. Sure. Um, I'll have to leave that in Mr. Martin's hands when he comes back. Okay, thank you, Sandy. Yeah, I think we've got through the worst part of the winter now. There's no, there's no sense of panic or anything. It, it, <laughs> this doesn't have to be done tomorrow. Right. Exactly, and, and I do believe, as I say, Brian Acne has, has done us proud down there. So thank you, Brian, if you're still listening. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, okay, we lost my we lost my. So any other? Am I on unfinished business? Am I? On? Lost my train of thought there. Okay, anything else from any of the council members on unfinished business? Uh, there are no action items and there are no information items. Um, so uh, we'll move on to a new business. Um, I think any um council Kuyak, you have some items under new business. I do. Did you want to do your update first, um, or do you want me to go ahead? Uh, you can go ahead. Are there any other items on the business? Any any counselors on 
No Zoom, no, okay. Go ahead, Councillor Quia. Um, so there actually is a, a few things and I'm gonna have to ask everyone for help, please. Um, but I, I did uh, absolutely love the new signage of Whitney, um, the Alaska signs as well as township signs uh, with the chickadees, uh, which just makes me think that we should also change the um, township signs that are posted at the borders or lines. Um, and Joe will help me, but I think there's four. There's one out on. Yes, there's four. Okay. And um, I did ask Jennifer to get us a quick quote, well, maybe not quick quote, but give me an estimate as to what, so that we could have that item put into the budget this year. And do you have it handy? Yeah. So for one sign, which I believe is the right size at 48 by 84 inches, is um, with tax $1,265. Twelve hundred and sixty-five. That's right. So we're looking at five thousand dollars now for tax, but roughly. That's not counting putting them in. Yeah, and who this does was that? actually installation as well. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Do the the company installs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. The same gentleman that makes the signs installed the ones that are in the right. township at the moment. So that's who we went back to for that. This, uh, in fact, this was a quote that I had gotten for the library, the um, Matawaska Library would like a larger sign to advertise okay. their location. Um, but looking at the size, I do believe it's the same size as those entrants into, uh, or would be very close because it is a large sign. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, okay, so then we, what we're talking about, Joan, you know, Council Creek, I'm sorry, I shouldn't call you Joan, mm -hmm. um, is we're looking at a uniformity of, of our sign, yes. basically. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think five thousand dollars is going to break the township. If it is, we're in bad shape. And <laughs> entrance signs were purchased and put in in twenty seventeen. Okay, and they're the older format and style. So what happens with those signs once if we change them? What happens with the other signs? The old ones yeah, come, down. Yeah, come down. Yeah, down and carry. Like I don't know. Really yeah, I don't imagine we would be putting them up anywhere because no. we wouldn't okay. follow then that branding plan. I, I'm not sure initially with that grant that we used to purchase these signs, I'm assuming because it had been fairly, it was only a couple of years prior that we had put those entrance mm -hmm. signs up, um, was probably the thought was to you know, let them deteriorate be a bit longer. and okay. then replace as yeah. needed. But we I can't use any money of our, out of our infrastructure fund there. Um, I would have to look into that, but it's it, worth, it a, it worth a call. Sure, Maybe yeah. we can get some money out of our infrastructure fund for that. Probably would fall under the road tax one too. Yeah, yeah the, gas like the gas tax one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can certainly look into that. So. I, my feeling behind the whole thing was, is that, you know, we've changed the brand. I think it's been well received. They look spectacular when you see them compared mm -hmm. to others. And it would just be nice to have that consistent mm -hmm. okay. vision. Okay. Any other comments on that? Or just, before you, just before we move on, just because I'm a contrary and I hate those new signs, uh, especially the ones that the posts are made to look like birch bark. They look like they're dirty. They look like they're falling apart. You love them or hate them? I hate the chickadees. <laughs> I didn't vote in favor of it when we went that route. How much did it cost us then? Uh, it was done under that. Uh, a grant program it didn't actually cost the taxpayers anything. Okay. But if you delve into the history of why the whole reason for chickadees. Are... Okay. <laughs> Notice. Always. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Collins, you had a comment? I do. I, I don't know whether or not the fire chief is still present or whether he has left. He's left. Um, He's left. He has left. Right. Um, with regards to the entrance to the township signs, I know that he, and I believe he has put it in his budget, he wants new burn notices put at those four um, positions as well. Because he said someone can drive into our township and never ever see a burn notice, whether or not it's daytime burning or evening burning or even a burning ban. And he believes that the four areas where the entrance into our township signs are would be a better place 
for the burn notices to be erected, either part of this sign or in the same location or, or underneath these signs. And I wonder if the project can be looked at with those burn notices incorporated into um, the design or, or added on at the same time because the burn notice for Whitney is um, at the community centre. Well, the rest of Whitney don't see that unless they drive along Hay Creek Road. The one in Madawaska is at the community centre and can't be seen from anywhere on Highway 60. And uh, I, I believe the other one on the 523, that they're just, it's at the back of Cross Lake area um, and unless you're looking into the woods, you wouldn't see that one either. Um, I'm not sure where the one is on the 127, but probably equally obscure. Um, so signage and the four signs for burn notices as well to be erected, I think would be the way forward. Um, that's, does anyone have an, any more of an idea about that? Are you suggesting they be put where the welcome to Whitney signs are? Is that what you're saying? No, yes. I'm sure the South Algonquin signs. I mean, yeah. The South Algonquin good. signs. Absolutely. Oh. And other townships, as, as we travel around the province, seem to do that. So they're very, very prominent. As you are driving and welcome to South Algonquin, hey, there's a, there's a burn ban or there's a night burn only. And at least people are made very aware as they come into the township, what the situation is. Who looks after these signs? Fire chief. Fire chief does? Yes, they, they, they send a team out or he goes out himself and moves them from daytime burning to nighttime burning or, or a burning ban. Um, so they, they need to be seen by people coming into the township for sure. And where they are at the moment, they are not seen. People don't see them. Do we have any idea what those cost? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just know that he was put in it as part of his budget to purchase them. But I think from the point of view, if we're going to go ahead and change those signs um, to incorporate the burn notices in the same location would, would be a, a good project to go ahead. I agree. I'd like to make a comment. Okay. Go ahead. Councillor Pe Pujan speaking. Um, I think relocation of our existing signs would probably be uh, adequate. Mackenzie Lake Road, for instance, has two burn signs, two burn indicators, uh, one coming from the north, one coming from the south. Um, they are visible, but anybody that is on the 127 corridor that lives on the 127 corridor, which there's not very many people, mind you, um, nobody really pays attention because they don't see the signs. There's burn signs as well too on the Hay Lake, McCray Hay Lake Road. There's burn signs there as well too. So to save a little bit of money, why don't we just relocate some of these signs? Okay, thank you, Councillor. Okay, anyone else comments? Okay, so well, I don't know where we go with this because I don't have a dollar figure or, or yeah, uh, anything. We, uh, during the budgeting process, we have this discussion with me and see yeah. or something. We'll make a note of that, and uh, I'm sure Ian will bring it back in his fire report because um, we're not going to do those signs right away. Okay, is that okay, Councillor Collins, Councillor Pijan? Yes, absolutely. Like I said, that, that's something to that, uh, take into consideration because we already have the signs. So if they are relocated to places where everybody can see them, um, we're going to be saving money. I, I do know um, that the MTO charge rental on the ground when you've got signage on Highway 60, um, Highway 523 and Highway 127 on numbered roads. So I thought incorporating them into the signs, Welcome to South Algonquin, would save on the rental on a double rental of that costing for the MTO, but maybe they don't charge um, the township as they used to charge private business. I, I'm not sure of that. So 
So thank you well, for that. I, they do. I don't I think they would, Chad, but that, I don't know, things may have changed, but I think that it's to their inter best interest and everything. They had signs before on fire hazards, et cetera. Well, I think it's a conversation we can have with, with MTO. I'm not against having those signs, but where the present locations are is great because it targets the people that are on that road. Like as Councillor Pijal pointed out, it targets the people at Hay Lake, the people at Mackenzie Lake, there's one at Allen Lake, there's one at Cross Lake. Uh, those are the people that traditionally have fires. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think we're targeting the right people, but I'm not against, I, I, I wouldn't like to see any of those signs moved. I'd like them to stay exactly where they are, but maybe four additional signs, one at each entrance into the township. So they all be the same? All exactly the same, yeah. Okay, that's okay. But it, it, it does create more signs for somebody to look after because every time the conditions change, the well, signs yeah, that's have to change. Concern. But I'm, yeah. I'm sure if, I'm sure if the fire chief is in favor of this, he's taking on the role that he's going to look after it. Well, he won't be here all the time. He's, well, okay, when he goes on vacation, it'll be you, council <laughs> Lord. No, I meant that uh, that the fire chief will resign at some time. Oh, okay. And the signs somebody will take his place. And yeah. It's just another duty that would be passed on. Okay. Point taken. So do we need a motion or anything? Or that's discussion enough? Then we're good to go on to the next? I think if we discuss it in the budget, then we pass the budget. That's the motion. That's motion. Okay. Fair enough. You had some other items, Council? I did. Sorry about this, guys. No. But um, looked um, and have spoken again to a few people in regards to property standards. I know that's a hot topic and Joe's laughing already, um, <laughs> but uh, maybe uh, I would suggest that that go to the next admin, uh, right, uh, meeting, which I don't know when that is, but I would suggest that we have another one to, and that be up, put on the agenda. Okay, noted it. Okay. As well as the strategic plan, I've been doing a little bit of reviewing um, and uh, most places have um, already updated theirs over the last couple of years. Ours is needed to be updated. So again, mm -hmm. just wanting to move that forward to the next admin uh, meeting as well that we, we put that on the agenda to look at it. Um, again, most places have uh, a one pager sort of um, uh directs their goals for that year. And uh, they are, are including four pillars. Um, and we have several, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, sections of our strategic plan. So uh, we may just want to sit down and look at it. I don't know if it requires any, um, we had, uh, company that came up and did the last one, correct? Right. When is our next admin meeting? We haven't just sat the meeting up on schedule yet. Yeah. And then the next and last one would be emergency management. Yeah. Um, and again, going back and looking at our um, um, power outage uh, slash, I don't know, it wasn't quite 72 hours, but uh, I think it, it I think we should put it back to the emergency management committee to look at it. So again, have that go back on the agenda and uh, review that because I, I do believe there's more holes than just the need of a, a generator for um, this building. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you for those bringing those forward. That'll be taken to the admin meeting and set that up as soon as we can. Um, any other councillors with any comments, business, or anything they would like to discuss? Um, yes, it's yeah. Councillor Pichon speaking. Go ahead, Councillor Pichon. Um, Councillor Kuyak and Sidoc, um, have you been approached by the rec committee regarding the, um, the recreation hall in Whitney about the kitchen? In regards to 
What's wrong with it? Renovating it. No. Renovating it? Yeah. So mm -hmm. Joe, uh, Joe um, Avery did bring that up. Um, and again, I don't know if that is what a rec committee should be doing versus what the township should be doing. It's the township's facility, um, not the rec committees. So um, I have spoken with Brian, but again, you just sit down and ask. There is no term of reference for that committee. So I'm not sure. <laughs> what what the terms of reference are you know does that rec committee uh look after the building or is that the townships yeah i can understand the confusion because we're all new to this right um but joe avery's um point was that if that kitchen which the, the kitchen is very small right the whole building was designed wrong but anyhow yes. that's, that's nor here nor there we own it now um, but if the kitchen was more user friendly, that the hall would probably get right at, would be getting rented more. Yes. So um, this is something that we should look into. Um, the other thing that was brought to my attention as well, too, is uh, and this is all getting back to raise the roof. I don't know if. Uh, remember the discussion we had a few meetings ago regarding the generator um, for either the recreation hall or for the township hall and using that raise the roof money to purchase that stuff. Um, so what Joe was speaking of was maybe contacting the people that did donate the money to raise the roof and put that money towards redoing the kitchen. Yes, he did bring that up at the last, uh, the first rep committee, and it was suggested there with the few people that were sitting around the table that that the the money was donated for a specific uh, project, and it's pretty hard now to go back and say, hey, you know, let's use it here, let's use it there. So I think what we were going to do the next meeting was come back with four or five different items and put a nice letter um, out to the community to say, you know, this is, we're not going to be able to do the roof. This is, it's just way too much. And here yeah. are different other, di other areas in which we might use that money. What are your thoughts and have the community has some input into where that is going, where that money is going to go. Like a survey. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that should hopefully come out in the next couple months because I believe the money is tied up and Jennifer, you might be able to tell me if I'm wrong, um, tied up until July. So we have to absolutely do something um, at, in July with it. It's in a an investment. Plan. Yes. Yeah. So it will roll over in July. So if yeah. we wanted to do some projects, then we'd have to be mindful of the, the date. Okay. Uh, further to that same discussion, I was approached by a former staff member and a current volunteer uh, suggesting that a separate building be built to house the Zamboni and that where the Zamboni is currently housed be renovated along with the kitchen to make the kitchen that much bigger and again with the same point that it would be more conducive to hall rental and and more use mm -hmm. uh, so at some point <clears throat> there has to be a discussion well, first of all I would like to see the recreation committee get agreement from the people in principle that they could use that money that's already sitting there for a different cause than what it was actually raised for. And that's, I don't think it's a big deal. You just put out a notice and ask for people yeah, for important. suggestions. And you're going to get a couple of people that are absolutely against it. And you're going to get, I think, the majority of people that will be absolutely for it. 
Yeah. Uh, at some point, you got to bite the bullet and make a decision. Somebody has to make the decision. And uh, I don't want to put that on on the hands of Joe Avery. It should be committee level, yeah. level not an individual level. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but I think all of that is doable, uh, but requires a lot of planning and probably some engineering if you're going to alter the building. Uh, and maybe some more fundraising or, or uh, applications for grants or, or something. But absolutely, I think uh, we're starting down the right road and I hope we continue and just make that building more usable. And, yes. and I thought of adding, if we're gonna add on, uh, add on towards um, extend the garage a little bit more this way or this way and put like an outdoor comfort station like the Westgate for public access 24 seven. For the winter, yeah. Yeah, we just talked about that the other day because again, where the, the outhouses uh, are, it's across the field and you've got the kids, playground, et cetera, uh, mm -hmm. that has nothing and nobody has access mm -hmm. to the building. So if we would be able to get access to something there that could be open 24 seven, then that would be a benefit. If I may, to the, to the chair, another consideration that could be also also thought of was um, we can't rent that building in the winter time because the the skaters yes. are so warm up so possibly and, and an area where I know there's been um, some comments brought back that it'd be nice to access a warm building to change your skates during the day when it's not open. So that could be something that could be considered as well. So if we want to rent it in the winter time. Um, we can do that as well. Because right now we can do that. Yeah, you can't do it. Well, I think we have some good ideas here, but I think we're talking about a major project. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, um, again, this isn't uh, going to happen overnight. And right. I don't, I don't want to see us go back and and for council's information. Uh, I remember the day. Uh, when and I wasn't on council, and I don't want to go back too hard in history, but council has the authority and came in and took the money from the community center board and dissolved the board. So the township does have that kind of power, and it was used in the past, mm -hmm. which left a really bad taste in people's mouths here in Whitney. So I just want people to be aware of that, not suggesting we do that, but that um, you know, council does have some some powers here that that were used in the past. So I don't know where we go with this. I think it's good information, but I yeah, think thanks it was for sharing, uh, Sean. That obviously people are talking to you as well, so that's great. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So I think that we have to make a decision that uh, that this is. Um, a bigger project than we we're kind of talking about. And are we going into the rental business? Because now they're back renting the hall in Whitney. So are we competing now? Or do we want to say that this, because it, it ultimately becomes a township. Uh, it's it's not just a rec committee, it's a township. Are we now in going to want to be in the rental business? Um, if so, I think we, we have to decide that that's what we want to do. And if we are in that kind of business, do we then sort of go with the skating? Because you can't do rentals if we have skating mm -hmm. or recreation open. So we're talking about a limited time that we're renting, right? So I think those are all questions, are really good questions, good comments um, that we have to look at. I don't know whether council has any other ideas or thoughts about that. Well, honestly, the skaters are only there three months of the year. Exactly. Right. Uh, yeah, if that. Yeah, if that. The season seems to be getting shorter. And, and shorter. we have people that want to be in there longer than when the skaters are in there, too. Mm -hmm. So that's another issue. The yeah. An argument to divert the money from the raise the roof, when they started raising the money for the roof, I think we had an estimate or a guesstimate of uh, $250,000 or something like that. But the latest, we've done some research since then, and it's millions of dollars yes. to put a roof up there. And nobody, and nobody, uh, I don't, there's no, no hockey anymore, you know, yeah. uh, no unfortunately. So you would only extend the season marginally by putting a roof on. So there's very little gain for a lot money. of money. And okay. probably now we're talking a lot more money. And I don't think. Oh, for sure.
I, I, I think people understand that. I think so too. And so now the question is, where do you use it? If anybody is ever up in the North Bay area uh, at the uh, calendar exit, when you're coming down the old Highway 17, uh, that's the one that you turn off at, at you can go to Corville and then it goes up and it turns dead ends on Lakeshore by the casino. Okay. But there's a road in there, and it's called the Bill Barber Arena. Bill Barber is a local calendar boy that played in the National Hockey League, and it's a covered rink, and it looks fantastic. But the repairs on they're talking about doing repairs now. It's about 15 years old, and they're in the millions of dollars just to do repairs. Wow, yeah. Well, but if anybody it. wants to see one that really looks good, it's that one. The roof covers. Oh. Like 10, 10 meters out past the rink boards on both sides. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful facility, that's for sure. Uh, but expensive, it's, very expensive. Yeah, it's all made out of laminated beams. And, oh, geez. Nice. There's another one at Coal Hill. Uh, it's done a little bit cheaper and it's not very effective because you also have to watch the alignment of. Uh, the roof with the yeah. sun or the alignment of the rink with the sun. And sometimes you can put a huge roof on there. It doesn't do any good at all. The sun, because in the wintertime, the sun is lower in the sky. And if it's open on the south end, the sun's coming in anyway. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Any other comments? I uh, definitely think, uh, this is Councilor Fusion speaking again, um, this is something definitely that we... Uh, can't forget about, and I think we should put this on uh, um, on moving forward. Let's move forward with this. I think. Are you talking? Well, I think uh, it'll be discussed um, probably at the rec meeting. So we, mm -hmm. yeah, it won't, it won't, it won't, uh, it won't uh, be lost, Councilor Fijo. Okay, thank you. I'm sure you'll bring it forward too. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Any other things from the council members? Oh. I just have one. I'll be I'll be quick with this. It's instead of a castle home update, it's actually a district social services admin uh, board update. Uh, in terms of castle home, we can't do anything right now, and I've been asked to go to a meeting with respect to Castle Home, which we can't because of uh, the situation we're in in terms of an agreement. So I just, I'm not going to a Castle Home meeting. So I just want to make that very clear. In terms of the district social services, uh, I met with the new chair of DSAP um, and uh, he advised me that I was talking to him about the whole housing situation. And um, he advised me that that DSAP would give us some help in terms of um, talking to the central mortgage and housing people about maybe helping us do uh, a usage sign uh, a usage in terms of what we want in terms of housing here in the township of South Broadway. So I think Brian had set up to get us a, a hold on a company that would come in and do that. But I did speak to Brian about that before he left, that I want to have this meeting with the new chair, Mark King, uh, and see what they could help this township with. So I don't know whether you got a quote. No, no. it's not coming to me. Okay, so there's apparently a quote coming in from the company to do that, that... Um, Brian had spoke to, uh, but my feeling would be for, because I said on the DSAP board to keep moving this issue forward and talking to the chair about getting somebody from uh, Central Margin Housing to come in and try to help us in getting a report. Um, I, I told the chair uh, that uh, we know what we want here. Uh, but they need something in, in writing saying this is what the county of South needs are. So if they want that, then I'm a believer that they will and can help us with that situation. 
and um, uh, Councilor Kwiat and Councilor uh, Sidoff did meet the chair of the board. Uh, and I did do a, re uh, well, I'll just, I'll just leave that there and see if there's any questions with respect to this update. No, no question. I, I do. Um, just, did you say, just so that I understand that, that you have put out a quote for a company to come in and do a needs assessment? Is that what you just said? <laughs> Brian, Brian, our CEO spoke to someone because we were bringing to Brian, right. the CEO, our concerns about housing and we're not moving on it. Right. So he did contact a company. Okay. And the company came back and said, we will provide you with what it would cost for somebody to come in and do a needs analysis for us. Okay. Yes. So that quote was supposed to come in yesterday. No, it's not going until next week. Oh, or until when I told the uh, the, the uh, contact that next week would be fine because Brian's not back anyway. Um, so she's going to provide a quote for uh, to do this study because it was our understanding that we have when funding is not available to us until we have this study or have yes. a yeah. study showing our needs. Yeah. So, so that's where he was moving forward, and then this all happened after. So, that's it happened after, and this happened because of, I think, we have a new chair with DSA who seems to, who has um, been into this township several times, mm -hmm. uh, knows a lot about the township, knows a lot about, you know, but they were, they were involved with the uh, day camp and they know about the property. And uh, so I'm putting my, my faith in this chair to see what he can do to help us. Because I don't want to go into the expense of providing some kind of analysis just to the district social services board when we're paying a fair amount of money in there um, in taxes and subsidies. So um, so I'm not saying we don't get that quote. No, if they can help us, then that's great. Right. You know, yeah. um, and, and um, Ryan is aware of that before he went on vacation, he was aware of my talking um, with the chair. Okay, so putting all things out, we'll we're going to do what we can without having to put any costs on the township. The way I feel about it, anyways. Um, like can I make a comment on that? You certainly can, Mayor Lavalle. You mentioned or posed the question of whether the township wants to get into the rental business of uh, the recreation thing, but uh, mm -hmm. is, the yeah. township, is the township going to get into rental business of housing? Uh, I, I would not. rather, I, I'm not against us doing the study in that, but I would rather us encourage private enterprise to supply the housing uh, so that we're a helper, not not the owner. Mm -hmm. of, yeah. And I know it may come to that, and it does occur in, in other communities that the, the township actually owns rental units, but mm -hmm. it's it's a major step. Personally, I don't want to get into the rental business. However, I think that um, when they if they come in and we get this lady or gentleman from um, Central Morgan Housing, I think that one of the things that has to be looked at here in terms of my talk with people, is a whole multi-use um, housing here. So we have people saying they want to rent senior apartments. We have people saying they want a home. We have people saying they uh, just want to sell their homes and move into a rental apartment. So I don't know what would come out of it in terms of the usage or whatever, but I think it's a question is and a conversation we'd certainly have to have as a township. Yeah. yeah. I would not want us to put us into the rental business of, you know, if we could avoid it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and that could be part of the part of the needs assessment process too. Right. Yeah. Right. So um, I will keep council apprised uh, if I hear back. Um, I have this Mark King's uh, cell number, so I will be on him. Uh, but in fairness, uh, he just became the chair, and um, I found him to be uh, very helpful. Um, we did a couple presentations on behalf of, in my opinion, North Bay uh, to some associate 
uh, ministers uh, about the transitional housing up there. And my concern was, I, I don't mind uh, helping them with because they have a problem up in North Bay, but I'm also very conscious of the fact that what do we do here in South Algonquin? Should we have someone that's homeless on the street and how do we deal with that? So I don't think that, and I, and I made this quite clear, that we, we're not going to send people up to North Bay to housing, so transitional housing. So um, anyways, uh, that was also part of uh, our meeting in Toronto that we we did all of this. So. Okay, the only other thing I have on the new business, I think was, um, I guess it becomes a budget item, is one of the reporters from the Valley Gazette did a, an article in the paper I thought that, um, uh, I know that we didn't pay for it, but it was about the business and it was about the township minutes. And I received from people within this township uh, support and saying how they really liked getting that in the paper, that they could read it because they can't go online. We have that same issue where, you know, many of our seniors uh, don't have computers, they're not online, and they get the paper. So. I felt that we should, I guess we'd have to talk to the other papers, but uh, get a quote in terms of putting our minutes in, in the paper. So um, Jennifer and I, Jennifer and I uh, had a discussion about that and we, we kind of think it wouldn't be more than what, a couple thousand dollars. Yeah, I, well, we were talking at that time, it would be a couple hundred dollars per ad. So yeah. But we're talking, I think the ad was going to be about that. Thing. Yeah, so I think, so no, it's going to be the minute. So. Yeah. But may, I, I will contact the report and maybe should do them again for us for nothing. Right. <laughs> uh, which paper were you talking It was Valley Gazette. It was in the last paper. And it was just the minutes. Yeah, it was the minutes plus the re, um, um, Christine Lucasavage's presentation. Right. Was, is she, done? she was up here, I guess, twice. And she had approached that me down at the meeting to say who she was. I didn't, didn't know who she was, but um, so that's who it was, Councillor Glenn. It appeared that when the, they had uh, listened to the, because there's quotes in it, so they had listened to the meeting and then, but it was very well uh, detailed and defined in the, in the Valley Gazette. I'm just not sure how many people in the township get the Valley Gazette. Well, I don't, for one. Uh, it's, again, it's a principal thing. But uh, the free one, the Bancroft this week, that comes out on Friday is free and everybody in the municipality gets it. Yeah, and, and we talked about that, getting a quote for that too. So I'm conscious of what you're saying. But I'm trying to make, I'm trying as mayor to, to uh, get us back in terms of getting the papers more involved with this township, because we kind of get forgotten. And uh, so I'm trying to figure out a way that we can keep our presence, not only in the free paper, but the Valley Gazette. I, I contacted the Eganville Leader also, but my sense is that they cover so much in that other end of the Ottawa Valley that we're not really getting um, a lot of service out of there. I think they do get, they sometimes do the Zoom things, but not always. So anything else? Okay, I don't have any other items and else anybody has any questions. Okay, we'll move on to motions of council then. Okay, I would need a mover and a seconder for the, uh, to make the falling reserve transfer. So if I can get a mover and seconder. Uh, I'll, I'll move that? it, Bill Rodnick. Okay. Council Rodnick, sorry, I can't see you. Uh, moved by Councillor Rodnick, seconded by Councillor Floyd. Uh, Carla? Moved by Councillor Rodnick, seconded by Councillor Florent, that Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin authorizes the CAO Clerk Treasurer, effective December 31st, 2022, to make the following reserve transfers. $375,770.72 from General Reserve, $13,729,000 from Elections Reserve, $25,109.89 from Fire Facilities Equipment Reserve, 
$167,477.67 from gas tax reserve, $136,352.83 from road reserve OSIP grant, $33,041.62 from recreation facility equipment programming reserve, $21,760 from planning reserve, $74.56 from Recreation Committee Reserve Whitney Rec, $2,466.13 to Gas Tax Reserve, $3,861.36 to Recreation Committee Reserve MNL Rec, $5,000 to Recreation Facility Equipment Programming Reserve, Transfer remaining surplus to general reserve. Upon determination, transferred surplus will be reassigned to the appropriate reserve accounts. And that the aforementioned transfer be completed following auditor review. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, this carried. Uh, a notice of motions, we have any no we have no notice of motion, do we? No. No. Okay, the next is bylaw. Um, I will entertain a motion to move and second it this bylaw to be deemed and read a first time and a second time. So do I have a mover? I need somebody to move. Move by Councillor Sidock, second it by Councillor. I can't see who that was. Collins. 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 It's been moved and seconded. Uh, um, Carla, sorry. Moved by Councillor Sidock, seconded by Councillor Collins, that bylaw 2023 737 Shore Road Allowance, Aylan Lake, bylaw 2023 738 Interim bill Tax Billing, bylaw 2023 739 Confirm the Proceedings of Council be read a first time and deemed. Read a second time. Been moved and seconded. Uh, been read first time and deemed a second time. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, uh, moved by. Uh, we need to deem this re read a third time and passed. So I move, I need a mover. Oh, come on. I'll move it. Who is that? Peltry Bill Rodney. Thanks to Councillor Rodnick, seconded by Councillor Priya. Been moved. A uh, third time to be read, a third time and passed. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, I thought we had something on to be. For, uh, excuse me. Okay, something for Avery. Oh, that's on that. Oh, sorry. Thought I had something for Council, but it's committee of adjustment. Okay. I'm 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 learning every day. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. We have uh, nothing to move into a closed session that I'm aware of. Uh, moving made right along. I will entertain a motion uh, to adjourn. So I moved, I need a mover and a seconder. I'll move. Moved by Council Puya, seconded by. I'll second it. Oh, who's that? Is <laughs> that Rodney? Oh, no, seconded by Council Pishaw. Thank you, Council Pishaw. <laughs> Down in the south there. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, okay. Carla? Moved by Councillor Kuyak, seconded by Councillor Pigeon. The Council for Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adjourns the regular council meeting of February 1st, 2023 at 10.54 a.m. Been moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Anyone not want to go adjourn? Okay. Uh, all in favor? It's carried. And the Council of the Township of South Algonquin regular council meeting is now adjourned.